Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody so now we are going to continue the T cell mediated immunity which we are discussing in the last class. So, you, I am going to start with the last slide again. Okay. So, this slide we just have di uh, discussed uh, in the last lecture and we have seen like what kind of uh, different kind of uh, pathogens are presented by or processed by dendritic cells and activate the T cells. Some are activating CD4, some are activating CD8. What happened this also a whole slide I have uh, shown you before like in from the peripheral or epidermis tissue there are some Langerhans cells like think what they uh, collect the pathogens or antigen uptake from in the epidermis on the skin and from there they migrate to the lymph node and in lymph node they transfer the antigen that which was discussing in the last lecture the mechanism is not known. So, they transfer the antigen of the resident dendritic cells which in turn activate the T cells and you know what happen after that they proliferate and leave the lymph node and come into the peripheral blood. Okay. So, this is again the bigger version of that. So, not only dendritic cells just we are discussing macrophage and B cell are also uh, professional antigen presenting cells. Macrophage is most of the time they are eating bacteria and they are the scavenger. So, they are cleaning up the mess. So, while cleaning up the mess the all virus killed cell or the cell killed by apoptosis induced by T cell or any kind of dead cell macrophage is eating. So, they are also process the antigen which is coming from outside present that we already know how they are doing. B cell are also highly efficient in presenting antigen right that binds to surface that you know that the T cell receptor uh, B cell receptor interact with the antigen internalized by endocytosis receptor mediated endocytosis and then mix with this and where the MAC 2 is sitting in that um, uh, vesicle and which presented by MAC 2. So, this is um, also done by um, B cell. Okay. So, this is in summary actually whatever I uh, just told before not only in few minutes back um, we have told many times before also that like dendritic cell macrophage and B cell all three antigen presenting cells are efficient enough. So, they are macrophinocytosis and phagocytosis when they are in tissue. This macrophage is can do macrophinocytosis and phagocytosis both are efficiently they can do and B cells are mostly by receptor mediated endocytosis and you know what happen after that they induced um, the T cells and result activation of T cells are their macrophage also in I mean variety of things because sometimes macrophage are activated by T cells you know the Th 1 response then they kill after killing they express the antigen much more efficient way and that will uh, induce the T cell. So, variety of things happen and here there are three major antigen presenting cells which differ their process of attachment or intake, but presentation in the surface of uh, their cells by MAC 1 and MAC 2. So, I am coming back to again what we were discussing in the last lecture. Cell adhesion molecules mediate the initial interaction. So, what happened? So far, we are telling how the antigen is coming, where it is coming in the lymph node, then it is processed, and we just told that okay, the B cell attached to the dendritic cells and proliferate. So, how this attachment? We told that chemokines are calling them and cell adhesion molecular attachment them. This is also true the naive T cell and the antigen presenting cell that attachment is also through protein protein or receptor like an interaction. It is not just the T cell receptor and MHC 1 what happened there is a series of dendritic cells okay, they are presenting variety of antigen all T cells are not going to find their own partner in every dendritic cells. So, what happened? So, there are similar antigen presenting cell are also presenting the ligand okay. and naive T cells they also has this integrin type molecule LFA 1 LFA 1. So, 
even there is no interaction between T cell receptor and MHC antigen complex or CD4, CD8, this interaction is happening. This brings them together, antigen presenting cell and T cell comes together because of such kind of interaction. After that what happened? So, when they come closer, then they can see well this MHC 2 say for example, MHC 2 has something less TCR is looking for that. So, this one bring them closer, this interaction, then this will find okay, whether it is interaction is going to happen or not. If the interaction is not happening, only this interaction is not strong enough, then this T cell will move to another site or another part of the same dendritic cells or another dendritic cells or macrophage. But if this interaction after bringing this interaction, if this interaction happen, so T cell receptor find its partner with MHC 1 or 2, then this interaction happen means then CD4 interaction is also going to happen. Okay. So, this interaction give a signal to this particular site. What is happening? If you see this, the, if you if you see this, this one, this region, you see this is not very tight binding, okay. though it is a cartoon, it is not tight binding, it is a lot of space are here. But as soon as this signal come, there is a conformational change, it become more tight. Okay. So, initially what happened if this is a ligand, it was like this, interaction was like this, but after the TCR and MHC interaction happened, they give the signal they become like this. So, it was like this, it was open, interaction was there not tight, but second interaction with MHC, TCR, CDA, CD4 gives the signal to that and it become, I mean it change its conformation and become more tight and specific. So, that T cell cannot leave immediately that. So, this is how the interaction starts. So, T cell comes to come closer to the antigen presenting cell initially lose or uh, less uh, interaction, okay. but interaction is there less tight interaction, but then if T shear T cell receptor and MHC interact that gives the signal that initial uh, uh, interaction becomes stronger and all together they begin they, they become very strong interaction, they be, uh, all, all this whole interaction is very strong and then they stay together. And what happened after that? After that this one, this interaction MHC TCR interaction gives a signal to T cell, this one is T cell now, T cell for activation, another T cell, multiple signal is required because only one signal if can activate the T cell, mistake can happen. Okay, so, multiple signal is important. Second Im very important signal I told once or couple of times like both activation of both B cell and T cell needs minimum two signal that is very very important. Any single interaction will not activate neither B cell or not T cell here also same. So, only TCR MHC complex is not this interaction is going to give a signal for activation definitely, but it needs another signal which is this one. This is come between B 7.1, 7.2 together it is called B 7 molecule. So, B 7 which is a heterodimer B 7.1 and B 7.2 very similar, this is in the antigen presenting cell and there is another receptor in T cell is there it is called C D 28. So, C D 28 B 7 interaction is also very very important. What it is doing? It gives the signal for the survival. So, the cell should survive. Okay. So, survival signal, activation signal and the antigen presenting cells will release some cytokines like this is all possible like IL 6, IL 12, 23, 4 every cytokines are not released all at a time, but these are the cytokines released by antigen presenting cells which will again there are receptor in the T cell which will bind and give third signal for the differentiation. All three signals are required to final get the effector T cells to be active in immune system. Okay. So, this is so it starts from where it was there the dendritic cells come the regular integrin. Uh, and other surface molecule attachment brings them together, then 
this MACTCR, then B7 CD28, this will give the signal survival and activation and the third signal by the cytokines which is released by the antigen presenting cells and tell the T cell to differentiate and do I mean go further proliferate differentiation both should be tend we have to have the effector function for to protect us. Okay. And C D 28 post evolution of activated T cells what it is doing because wh what it is saying it is survival. So, you have to survive you have to replicate you have to survive what it is very interesting what it is telling actually it is activating the interleukin 2 receptor more um, specific interleukin or more affinity interleukin 2 receptor. What is happening or what is there actually interleukin 2 has I mean interleukin 2 can bind two type of receptor one only alpha and beta chain a complete IL 2 receptor has three chain okay, heterotrimer alpha, alpha, beta and gamma. It is a heterotrimer this is a IL 2 receptor, but, but only beta and gamma chain also can act as IL 2 receptor. Okay. Part interaction is also, okay, but the affinity is not as good as this, because it will fit much better here, though it is a cartoon, but it is fitting much better here. So, trimer version of the IL 2 receptor is more efficient and high affinity and dimer version is moderate, affin moderate affinity. What happen actually in T cell, normal T cell they express the moderate affinity IL 2 receptor. Okay. So, when activation happened by B 7 and C D 28 molecule, B 7 and C D 28 molecule then this interaction or that B 7 C D 28 signal go there and they express the I L 2 molecule. Okay. I L 2 is uh, I mean here if you go back if you go back in this interaction they give the signal of expressing the gamma subunit of the alpha subunit sorry alpha subunit of the I L 2 receptor because beta and gamma is already there. Okay, beta gamma is already there. So, that B C D 28 B 7 in, uh, interaction or signal express the alpha subunit. What happened? So, the from moderate affinity I L 2 receptor converted to high affinity I L 2 receptor. Okay. Not only that the cell also produce its I L 2 itself. So, what is happening? They produce I L 2. So, they get the signal. So, the which produce I L 2 as well as the alpha subunit of the IL 2 receptor. What is happening? It is producing IL 2 bind to its own receptor which is more affinity and gives the signal for proliferation and survival which is differentiation and proliferation both. So, this is a very good example of autocrine and not only autocrine it also regulates the affinity of the receptor. So, by any chance what is hap going to happen? So, if by any chance if any so suppose there is a neighboring T cell which is producing this I L 2 receptor and if it binds here it will not going to give that signal. Okay, it is not going to give this signal it is always possible there are 2 T cells or 10 T cells together these get activated it is releasing I L 2. Okay, it will bind here as a T cell also has the I L 2 receptor here it will can also bind here, but that binding will not give this signal for proliferation and differentiation because the affinity is not same. So, because once it is released from the cell it has no control it can go and bind any cell. So, normally cell has moderate affinity. So, they are half prepared always. So, as soon as it need make the third one and do its own job. So, neighboring cell will have only these and not going to be activated because all of them are in the same place. Okay. So, this is how T cell get activated by MHC. So, three signals one signal and is uh, IL 2 is very very important for proliferation and differentiation, but this kind of signal the co stimulatory signal is how long it will continue. So, if it is continue forever then it is a problem right. So, what is happening that is another interaction because if T cell once activated and continue to 
do its own job and always super active then it is also not good because the immune system should shut off. So, there is a negative control also. So, here this is the regular giving signal number 1 okay, that is a positive that means for proliferation and activation and helping them right. This is 1 of 1 to 3, but there is when this thing is happening another protein is expressed by activated T cell which is called CTLA 4. Remember this is very common and many times you will find question from this uh, this place in your competitive exam also. Okay. So, like how this co-stimulation control the uh, T cell molecule activation because CTLA 4 also has the same target B 7.1, but this interaction gives a negative feedback it is a negative sign. So, once the B 7 C D 28 is activating the T cell, but here B 7 and C T L F 4 is inhibiting the T cell proliferation. So, that is how it is there is a competition and there is a balance also it is not that once it is activated it will continue to go on. Okay. But this has this interaction has more avidity okay. it can bind more and gives better signal. So, once it binds it is very hard to I mean it B 7 C D 28 also good uh, strong interaction, but the avidity is more here. Okay. So, that is how it activation and inactivation is properly balanced in immune system and T cell is just um, doing its own job. But once the T cell is activated and go and do it started so this this is activation say for example, say B 7 C D 28 interaction MHC 1, MHC 2, 1, 2 and uh, number 3 by uh, cytokines is not mentioned here. So, T cell get activated. So, these activated T cell go here and they started producing IL 2 and activating itself autocrine regulation they divide proliferate, but once it is happening they do not need any more that once it is released get the signal. So, it will uh, continue I mean it will do its own job as long as uh, interaction is there. Okay. So, the proliferating T cell differentiate into effector cells that do not require the continuous signal of 1 and 2. Okay. So, once it is get the signal it will multiply and what it will do suppose it is a cytotoxic T cell it will go and look the virus infected cell it will bind and kill it. Okay. So, this is say one tissue where uh, cell number this cell and this cell is virus infected. So, the two cell is produced say for, for the sake of this slide these two cell will go bind two cell and kill it and imagine you multiply that if there are 100 of cells 100 of T cells are producing more virus infected cells more because activation is continued. As long as antigen presenting cells are getting the supply of antigen it will remain active as long as antigen presenting cell can present antigen it will continuously activate the T cell right and it will do the job uh, the activated T cell will do its own job here particularly in this slide it is um, killing cytotoxic T cell. So, if they can kill all the I mean killing the virus infected cell sorry if when all the virus infected cell will die gradually what will happen APC or the antigen presenting cell will not find the antigen to present. If they do not find the antigen to present this T cell will not activate anymore. So, no new T cell will come and no new T cell will come means this whole process will gradually slow down, okay. but it is not immediately you know that it takes 6 7 days to get to come in this stage. So, second day it will not suddenly stop gradually it will again slow down and some of these cells will remain as a memory cell for secondary infection if there is any. Okay. C D 8 T cell can all be activated in different way become cytotoxic effector that one way we said another is direct activation. So, dendritic cell itself can be virus infected and there may be interaction and the cytotoxic T cell can be directed and activated and kill it. Okay. Cytotoxic T cell if it is a dendritic cell the antigen presenting cell itself is virus infected it can kill virus infected cell or the dendritic cells. Okay. So, it is because sometimes it is 
happening. So, CD8 T cells peptide plus evasive class 1 also can bind and kill it and give the signal. It is also can be activated by CD4. How? Because suppose this is the antigen presenting cell. Antigen presenting cell is not only expressing MHC1 to activate CD8, it also expressing MHC2. Right? MHC2 is only expressed by the antigen presenting cells. So, suppose imagine a situation where antigen presenting cell presenting same antigen or same uh, by MHC1, same antigen means same pathogenic antigen uh, by MHC2 as well as by MHC1. So, what will happen? CD4 will be attracted like this B7 CD28, that is not only for CD8, that B7 CD28 is true for both CD4 and CD8. So, this M, uh, MAC2 TCR interaction CD4, B7 and then and CD40, there are so many other interaction, just uh, main or major one we are discussing here. So, this interaction will activate CD4. And this interaction, suppose this interact, but C D B7 is not here for some reason. So, C D8 interact with this. So, what can happen? Activated C D4 T cell can also activate the C D8 cell, which is in the same location, because not only it is IL2, there are some more signal which is going to give this. So, what will happen? This interaction will give the antigen presenting cell a signal to express more B 7. When more B 7 will come, this they will not be alone. So, there will be again interaction, which is not so near. So, this interaction will give the signal to antigen presenting cell to express more B 7 and this B 7 will interact now and some other interaction also will help this particular cytotoxic T cell to activate. So, in this case what I can say is that cytotoxic T cell is activated not directly by the antigen presenting cells, but with the helper T cells. So, T helper cells also activate cytotoxic T cells in some cases clear. Now, we are coming to C D 4 T cells. Cytotoxic T cell activation is more or less what we said. C D 4 T cells differentiate into several subsets okay, that we will learn. I will just tell the name not much function. What are those? You know T H 1, you know T H 2, you know T follicular, follicular means uh, which help the B cell T H 17 and T regulatory cells. So, the they I mean C D 4 T cells are of 5 subtypes all of them interact with MHC class 2, these are their function 1 T H 1 you know already killing the internal parasite, then the bigger parasite like helminth and then T 17 cells again clepsilionemini candida and here this is activation of B cells and this is T regulatory cells which it is mostly regulate or inhibit T cell activation, it regulates T cell activation. Okay. So, uh, will come I mean that uh, detail you will see I mean little more detail we do not have the scope to express much more about uh, this, but more detail will be discussed when we will study the cytokines okay. when we will tell you the cytokines that time we will discuss this because it is more related with cytokines. And this cytokines what just I was telling cytokines actually make their different effect. So, T H 1 cells by this interferon gamma and interleukin 12 T H 2 is I L 4, T F H I L 6, then tumor growth factor is beta, we will call it T G F beta, I L 6, I L 23. So, these are the cells okay. and this is the this is by which they uh, become and after at this stage after becoming T H 2, they produce I L 4, I L 5, I L 13 and it is produce I L gamma and I L 17 actually the origin of name of this T H 17 cells. C D 4 T cell subset can cross and regulate each other differentiation through cytokines. So, all these subsets also has some crosstalk. How? These crosstalks means T H 2 inhibit T H 1, T H 1 inhibit T H 2, okay. T regulatory inhibit both T H 1 and T H 2. So, there is a balance. There is a balance means all possible cells are there, but all are helper cells, but it is not that they are continuously doing helping us. So, they also 
have a balance and that balance is again by the cytokines. Some cytokines release and stop some activity, some cytokines activate some activity. So, this way the their function is regulated. Fortunately, we do not have to know all these things to regulate them, but for study we should know that this we do, I mean in cytokine class you will learn in little more detail, but here you should know that Th1, Th2, Th17, Treg they have a crosstalk they can control each other activity when Th1 is important then Th2 is suppressed when Th2 is important Th1 is suppressed. So, that kind of control is there and regulated CD4 cells involved in controlling adaptive immune response. Treg is also uh, that uh, you will see later. Okay. Now, what we are saying the cytotoxic T cell I am going come back to cytotoxic T cell again. Okay. Because T helper cells you will learn say helping B cell uh, uh, activation or production of antibody you will learn much more in B cell immunity and B cell uh, development. And then all these other cells because here T cell mediated immunity we are mostly going for T cell immunity. Okay. T cell immunity and that T cell immunity means the cell mediated immunity which is mostly is the killing by cytotoxic T cell. Helper part this is also involved in the adaptive immunity is very prominent way, but that comes mostly in the B cell activation and other part that will be discussed in that time, but now I am coming back to T cell cytotoxic T cell. So, what is happening again here this it is the interaction starts with the non specific interaction again with that integrin and uh, other ligand protein. So, you see here in this case I, 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 I think I brought the same slide again. So, initially they interact with this then they found the specific interaction and uh, this specific interaction if they found that okay, if this is a virus infected cell. So, the virus infected cell is here this is not. So, it interact with the non virus infected cells then it is not that strong go to next when it come to next it found if this particular T cell find this one a very strong interaction what I am saying here actually. And then this interaction gives the signal that the virus infected, infected cells should die and gives a signal for killing and it dies. So, that is how it work ok and uh, this how it this killing is happening is very interesting if you see this picture you have to understand because now you know immunostaining. So, what happened here you see the green is the actin and uh, red is the lysosome. If you see this is the cell so actin is everywhere this is actin stress fiber and all these small red dots are lysosomal vesicles they are, they are all over the cell. This is the schematic diagram. So, this is target cell that means suppose this is a virus infected cell they interact first okay. at this time the Golgi apparatus this MTOC is microtubule organizing center you may have heard this in the cell biology then the lysosome they are distributed all over the cell. Okay. After this interaction if this second interaction happen that means the MHC and T cell receptor interaction happen this interaction makes what change they change all these thing in one line you see the MTOC is here Golgi is here then lysosome is very close to this interaction site. This can be seen also in the fluorescence microscope you see we cannot see all this thing, but at least we can see that all the lysosome which was distributed all over the cell are here. And next cartoon is very clear that all this lysosome material they release and this red dots are very dangerous this is electron microscope you can see it is here. red dots are very very dangerous what are they they are porphyrin they are granzymes granulysin fast ligand fast ligand is actually activating the apoptosis. Okay. So, what is porphyrin porphyrin is a small molecule pore forming peptide you can say it makes hole inside the cell. So, if you make a hole cellular material come out. So, the, the whole cell will rise. So, virus cannot survive. Granzyme is a protease, serine protease which activates the apoptosis. Okay. Granulysin is the antimicrobial action and can induce apoptosis. 
So, fast ligand, granulysin, granzyme all three are good in killing or uh, destroying the protein as well as apoptosis and perforin makes hole. And perforin how they are making hole, you can see this picture, this is the electron micrograph, there are so many holes and these holes are like that. So, the proteins are like we already uh, discussed you now with the bead, the perforin are making like that. Okay. So, this perforin will make a hole and channel everything will come out. So, this is the kind of uh, structure they form. Now, this is how they kill. So, once they say suppose all cells are viral infected, what will happen? Cytotoxic T cell will come kill one by one or multiple cytotoxic T cell activated will come and kill. Okay. If suppose if the case that these three cells only one is virus infected cell. So, it is not going to hamper any of these two neighboring cells, but it will kill only this one. Okay. It will come here and release this granzyme and granulation very in the contact place only. So, when it is contact in the contact place only, it is not like spread everywhere. So, it will not disturb or kill the other cells. This you know that Th 1 activate the macrophage and you can see this is the regular macrophage. As soon as it activated, so many new molecule comes in the surface. This is activated macrophage and what happened? They started killing. So, initially they do not know, now they know how to kill and one more information I should add that this I am skip, I will skip this also. One more information I will add that this structure is not alone. What happened as where there is macrophage like particularly mycobacterium infection or Lismany infection, all the T cell just cover them. So, infected macrophage are basically covered by the T cells. So, they cannot live till they clean all this area and that is called granuloma. So, in TB patient lung granuloma formation bottom one you can see is there. So, once this bacteria is removed then T cell will disperse. Granuloma formation is a positive signal for immune system and that is how doctor sometimes see the uh, tissue biopsy like okay, granuloma is there or not. If granuloma is there that means immune system is working fine. Okay. This is more or less cell mediated immunity or cytotoxic T cell immunity. Okay. See you in the next class.